Hi, I'm Jake, and we're the band Health. I'm Johnny. I'm Beej. And what's in my bag? First thing I chose was the original soundtrack to Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers written by Quentin Tarantino. I wanted to do something that sort of touched my life when I was very young and had a huge effect on how I thought about music. So this soundtrack was produced by Trent Reznor and it's just incredibly diverse. Like the amount of songs like exposed me to Leonard Cohen for the first time, like particularly 80s era Leonard Cohen. The lizard of the world is across the threshold and it's overturned the order of the soul. When he is voice had already dropped three octaves from chain smoking and it's a completely different sort of presentation of him. There's the Cowboy Junkies cover of Velvet Underground Sweet Jane, which is one of my favorite songs of all time. Sweet Jane. Sweet, sweet Jane. I just like wore that tape out. So when I saw it uh, on the rack, I just immediately was like, I think it would be honest for me to grab that one. So that's my first pick. So uh, I grabbed here, uh, this is, might be my favorite band of the 90s, this or uh, My Bloody Valentine, but uh, uh, it's it's really, really rocking album. I know Goat is considered the Goat, but uh, for me it's always been Liar because of right here there's these these three songs in a row in the, in the front is just a, is a dog fest that just really, uh, really gets me going. Uh, rolling with the theme of being honest and bands from the 90s, my favorite band from the 90s and of all time. definitely a shared sentiment uh, in this band uh, is Nirvana. Not me. Um, me. Between Jake and I. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was like, who's going to grab this between the two of us? But yeah, it's just um, hearing Nevermind, uh, hearing uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit on the radio was the first time I really wanted to drum and realized like drumming could be like that. So I owe a lot to Dave Grohl and his drumming on this album. Next, I have a John Coltrane very deep cut, Stellar Regions. The reason I picked this one is it's the first time I heard freeform jazz. I had a friend in school who was ahead of me on some of his uh, listening habits, and I'd only been experienced in music, I mean, exposed to music that was on the radio or music that was in skateboard videos. The sort of richness of the saxophone on the first track, which is called Seraphic Light, is just like incredibly emotionally arresting. I don't think that there is, for me, an example of another instrumentalist who can be more expressive with their, with their instrument than John Coltrane, but this album and just that, his body of work, sort of post-Blue Train, freeform era is, I think, unparalleled. This is uh, one of my favorite bands of the 2000s, the Blood Brothers, and uh, this is probably their most well-known album produced by a new metal legend, uh, uh, Ross Robinson. Remember at the time being uh, like disappointed and because I was such a snob back then. I don't know why. It's actually a great album. Uh, I, it's not my favorite one of theirs, but it's 
It's really intense. There's two two singers who are both screaming, and it's just uh, bananas, a dog fest, and it will really get your blood pumping. It's really, really crazy, and in a good way. It's very fun to listen to. It's not a, it's, it, well, it sounds like it's mildly annoying, but it's not, it's not like so much dog that you can't pay attention or just you tune the background. It's, it's consistently exciting and fun. Back to rockin' and another big influence on me musically, stylistically, drumming especially, would be Faith No More and especially uh, The Real Thing and this album, uh, which as I was saying earlier, I think is their best album. It's one of those kind of maybe first listen, you're not so sure kind of albums and then you keep listening to it and you're like, God, I kind of love this, like, kind of like it the most. One of my older brothers, he had the tape for the real thing. So that's where my first experience with Faith No More is we were just driving around uh, in Riverside, California, where I grew up, listening to Faith No More. I went and found the punk section and I was gonna grab a different Crass record um, because Crass was extremely foundational for me uh, as a kid. I was obsessed with that entire sort of peace punk genre and that world that Crass Records created. But this record is by far my favorite record um, of theirs. It sort of brings them out of their admittedly extraordinarily rudimentary sound palette that they had on Feeding the 5000, their debut record where like the rhythm guitar is literally just downstroked, full muted noise. It's like, it's like proto noise. Like there's an element in every song if you listen to those records where there's just a guitar that is playing non-musical crunch like the entire song. <laughs> But this double album is much more sprawling. It's a concept record and very proggy, in fact. And there's samples from obscure British TV and film peppered in through the throughout the entire thing, like very much in the style of Throbbing Gristle, which I didn't know about at that time. The female climbs into the male where she'll live the rest of her life. It's a simple life. Come on. Come on. She loves Yes, isn't she? So I guess definitely went like a little bit nostalgic on everything. I've just realized now there is nothing current in my bag and I apologize to all the musicians that are working so hard, but you know, that's the fucking breaks. Uh, this is one of my favorite albums of all time, uh, Close to the Edge by Yes. It's definitely like an album for people who play instruments, but uh, my favorite bass player of all time, my personal musical hero, Chris Squire. And really, this is like a, you could just choose an instrument and just listen to just that one, the whole album, and it's only three songs, one's 20 minutes. That said, it is not boring. It's very, very pleasing to listen to. It's very fun. I mean, it's yes, it's like, it's might not be your cup of tea. It's kind of funny. The guy sounds like an elf, but it's it's great. I mean, it's fucking brilliant music. And uh, I highly, highly, you know, smoke a doobie or something with this on. <laughs> you don't say. Well, you could probably smoke a doob to this one too. And it would definitely be in my more discovery uh, category because I know this dude and I like Turkish rock and psychedelic rock in general, but um, I know he's pretty solid. Goji Dunya is definitely a hit. And so, uh, Erkin Kore, I believe is how you say his name. <laughs> next pick here is not even remotely a record that I would listen to all the time. 
I would in fact say that you have to be in a very particular mood. I have William Bazinski's Disintegration Loops. This is volume four, I believe. If you're not familiar with this particular work, he's a modern experimentalist, avant-garde composer, and he had like all these field recordings and snippets of music he had made, and in the process of transferring them um, on magnetic tape, as the transfer tape gets worn down, the sound quality tends to diminish and hence disintegrate, and you're essentially hearing it as it transfers over and over again, the actual physical medium is dying off. The warbling and sort of decomposition of it, it's impossible for it to not be incredibly evocative of our own mortality and the temporal nature of our lives. Um, so it's very fucking heavy and he released this um, right after the 2001 September 11th attacks. He was living in Brooklyn, so it was like the entire city was kind of locked into a moment where they were all very aware of mortality and how um, unpredictable life is. So not light fair, but I think it'll help you grow. This is a, a contemporary of ours and a, and a personal friend of mine, The Soft Moon, and uh, gone too soon very recently. And uh, this is probably one of his, this is one of those ones, both love it albums. It's really great modern post punk. Uh, it's like the greatest intros of all time. I don't know, he just, it just really nails the, uh, just the cool of it. And, uh, and I'll miss you, bud. An incredible live performer. Yes. Absolutely. Rest in peace. This is the last pick, it was kind of a random one, but again, back in the honesty uh, corner, I just always kind of liked this band. Um, and back in my days when I would kind of hotbox from burn CDs from the library, this is one I picked. I always liked Kazuma Makuno's um, voice, and it was just kind of very much a contrast to some of the other super dude heavy uh, music I was listening to at the time, or still am. So. I love that your library had that record. Yeah, yeah, Cal Poly Pomona, shout out. Thank you very much for coming in talking with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys Thanks for, for having us. us. My fun. pleasure.